telepathy is death. Man, it's been a long time. I do apologize, guys. There's just been so much going on in my life. And, uh, you know, sometimes things like this happen. I had a, a nice career change and, uh, you know, I, I'm in a much better place. Um, but in turn, it's had, you know, me, I basically have to reschedule things and reorganize my entire life because everything's changed so much. So um, I definitely have less time than I used to have, but it's no excuse. I need to make time. Uh, so that's something that I, I have talked with my wife. It's something that I do plan on doing. And, um, you know, we're going to go from go from there. So uh, with that being said, I have reviewed the or have listened to um, the entire Bane trilogy done by Drew Carpishin, uh, who For those who don't know, he actually had an integral part in the Knights of the Old Republic game, the first one, and really understands Star Wars. And it's very evident in this. Uh, in this trilogy. So I wanted to talk about it and kind of give you my review. Without, uh, you know, further ado, I'll just give you straight up the first three uh, books, like with my individual grade for all three of them. First one, definitely the best book, definitely an A+. Uh, second one, more focuses on The Apprentice, but still absolutely outstanding uh, book in itself. I'll give it an A. And then the third one, um, kind of wrapping everything up yeah, I would give it an A minus so they definitely like take a step down a little step you know I'm a pretty harsh grader and uh, I still give it an A minus the third one so they're still all great you know averages out to a nice nice pretty A I, I love it for those who know me I'm a fan of dark movies dark film and just dark themes in general this trilogy is the darkest Star Wars out there. Unless I've missed something. Um, before I used to think it was KOTOR 2. Mm -mm. No, this is this is way darker than that. Uh, in fact, I was sitting there reading it and, or listening to it. Uh, by the way, Jonathan Davis, the narrator. Phenomenal. It's the best audiobook I've ever listened to. But I'm sitting here listening to it and I, I hear things happen and I'm like, oh man. They couldn't do this anymore. You know, today they couldn't do this stuff. It's really dark stuff. Um, you know, whether it be, I forget his name right now, but the uh, the healer um, that saved Bane and was forced to save him again by Xana. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name right now, but when he was spoiler alert, by the way, when he was cut up in the little pieces and chopped up and and uh, Tomcat went nuts. You know, that's a really dark moment. Or when Bane slaughters an entire family. Um, there, there are just so many dark moments in this that I really, really did enjoy. Because it's, it's dark. It's dark side. You know, this is all about the dark side and the rule of two. This is evil, evil stuff. Evil Star Wars. And that's what you expect. Now... It's not just evil on that end or dark on that end. Like there's a, there's many different dark themes across across it. I mean, the Brotherhood of Darkness fighting against the Army of Lights. Even the Jedi are in darkness. Um, Hoth, the you know the the head honcho for the Jedi in this time, even he's falling to the dark side and and kind of they fight this gruesome war with with the Sith. And I mean. It, <laughs> Even the Sith soldier, when, when Bane was Dez, when, when they're chumping Dez. Like, this is a very, very dark version of Star Wars. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, it's it's not your, your, you know, it's not your father's Star Wars, for example. Uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. So, I, I would like to point out as well that... This was all unique characters. Everybody was invented by by Drew. And it just goes to show that you can indeed do creative original Star Wars without any help from relying on, on previous characters. I guess in a lot of ways it reminds me of, you know, KOTOR. It's a completely new original story. And it's funny that Drew Carpishan was so integral for both of these both of these stories that we have 
But let's get down into it. Um, the first book, Path of Destruction, I do believe, released in 06, right after Revenge of the Sith. Bane's an interesting character because he comes from, you know, this mining plant in Apatros, I believe it's called. And he's a miner, and he's 6'6", six, six, big mountain of a man. And he doesn't really have any love for the Sith or the Republic in this point in his life. And he had an abusive father, and he works basically his life away in the mines. And he's mining cortosis, which is the material that we see throughout Star Wars, right? The lightsaber resistance material that gets woven into armors and things along those natures, like Viber Blades and stuff and KOTOR. So, we're, we're, you know, he's in a minor, he's a, he basically works his life away, but the one thing that he can do for fun, but it's really not fun for him, it's more of like a job, and it's funny, I actually knew somebody who did this over in Vegas. He play, plays cards with the Republic soldiers that are stopping in, you know, recruits or whatever the case may be, or, or I guess the shipments that go to the Republic, the Republic soldiers stop by and play cards with the locals. Well, Dez, who turns into Bane, Dez at the time, he, he's definitely force sensitive and he believes he has the special gift, right? He can kind of dictate the future or, or really see the future, glimpses of it, right? It's just untrained connection to the force that he has. And he's playing cards against these soldiers and he's kind of talking shit with them, you know, the counter argument to the Republic and how, you know, they haven't done anything for him. Basically draws parallels between the Sith and the Republic. Well, you know, hours go by and he eventually just absolutely wins, you know, takes all their money, essentially. And they meet up with him. Um, a few hours later after it closes off, the bar closes off and they jump him, uh, this Republic soldier and two of his buddies. And he actually ends up killing one of the soldiers. Well, this starts his journey. He's forced to leave. He can't go to Republic space cause they're probably looking for him. So, um, he decides to go to join the Sith army. Well, this is kind of his first step right he's already spurned from the republic and uh, he's probably not going to be friendly with them you know what i mean and i don't blame him either for this holding this uh viewpoint so he joins the sith and he joins this like group called the uh, gloom walkers they have this nickname and his connection to the force allows him to be this powerful um not necessarily powerful is probably the wrong word for it very skilled sergeant who saved his platoon's life many different times. Um, so much so that he's really the uh, pseudo leader of the group. Um, this kind of hurts the pride of the lieutenant the CO. And Bane gets orders from the CO that are basically suicide orders, but he determines the CO is too pussy essentially to... Um, counter the Sith who gave him the Brotherhood of Darkness, who are the Sith in this time. Um, counters the, his orders and says, you know what, we're going to do something different. Knocks out the CO and saves his unit. You know, instead he takes a bit more of a strategic route, uh, basically attacking a command post at night rather than the daytime. And they have overwhelming success in the mission, but the CO isn't so happy about it when he comes to and he court marshals Dez. Well, the Sith come and they take Dez away and uh, determine that he's going to be training as a Sith. So they take him to Korriban, which is where all of the potential Sith lords actually train. And this is really his first introduction to the Force. You know, learning the deeper wisdom of the Force and such. And he's like the most 
promising student, right? And uh, essentially, he reads into the texts on Korriban and to the ancient Sith, like when Revan was Sith Lord. And he determines that the Brotherhood of Darkness, which basically says that all the Sith Lords are equal and no one stands above the other, even though everyone kind of knows that Khan, who is on this, Rusan is the planet, or like the final battle planet, um, he's the leader, is what they all, they all know without saying it, right, the unwritten leader of everybody, he's the one who created the Brotherhood of Darkness. Well, through training, you know, Bane has some hardships and everything, but he determines that this is a bastardization of the Sith, and he you know, reads into Darth Revan and the previous Sith Lords and determines that he's going to change things once and for all. He's going to establish the rule of two. Now, the rule of two is there. there's one master of the Sith that embodies the dark side and the power of the dark side. And then there's a apprentice that craves the power. So one who emb embodies the power and one who craves it. This is repeated throughout the trilogy. And he, through manipulation, on the final battle, gets Khan to activate this thought bomb. So Khan summons all the Sith to this final battle on this planet. And Bane sabotages one of the final battles. And Khan and the Sith get destroyed. And there's only a few of them left. Khan activates this thought bomb that kills all Force Sensitives within a certain radius leaving the Jedi the remaining Jedi to believe the Sith are wiped out so this really kind of kickstarts the Sith that we know right the uh, master there's always two there are no more no less as Yoda famously says in Phantom Menace um, this really kickstarts the rule of two and Bane knows that his plan of overthrowing the Republic may not come in his lifetime but potentially down the down the line so he's he basically has the sith now they work in the shadows right they alter egos and and such and take on facades and, and do these missions and stuff like that um behind the scenes and he finds darth xana this young girl who snaps the necks of two jedi after this um unfortunate accident with one of her friends or family members gets killed by the Jedi kind of a mistake but um, she snaps their neck right as a child like a 12 year old so she's undoubtedly has power and Bane finds her and takes her on as his apprentice now Xana is a very interesting character because she's a sorcerer so she can kind of like go into the minds of her victims and cause them to go insane. Like, brings their worst fears to fruition and causes people to, like, claw their eyes out. This happens a few times. Um, basically drives them mad. And it's another incredibly well done dark moment throughout these novels. So she's just, like incredibly powerful in the force um sorcerer who wields a double-bladed lightsaber and bane is this brute strength um just pure willpower sith lord um and bane is is the most one of the most interesting sith to me because we understand his thought process and it's it's a little bit tragic because he could have easily been a Jedi and had their mindsets and, and views and everything. If things just went a little bit different, that's kind of one of the beats in this. It's always like if it just was a little bit different, he could have been saved. But it doesn't go that way and he does become the Dark Lord of the Sith. And he actually gets uh, in the second book, The Rule of Two, he gets this armor 
called orbalisk armor. It's like these parasites that eat up. They, they basically feed upon the dark side. It causes him to lose control several times throughout the books. But he takes it because he accepts it because they essentially make him invulnerable. Like lightsabers can't even penetrate their shells. So another amazing thing about these books is that there's a lot of drawbacks to KOTOR 1 and 2. Um, one, um, Bane goes to Lehan, the forgotten world where the Rakata were. He goes into the temple, has an epic battle, finds his holocron of, of Revan. And then he also goes to Duxon, to the Tomb of Freedom Nad. And that's where he finds the Orbalisk armor. But it's just a, it's an adventure. It's a dark side adventure. And, and that's what I really truly appreciate is the originality of it. The darkness of it. It never feels like a child's book ever. It never feels like a teen's book. A teenager book either it feels like an adult Star Wars book and if you're gonna do a rule of two um, trilogy this is exactly how you do it now the second book focuses more on Xana's training but a little bit more on the prime of Darth Bane like, this is the prime this is this is when he's the strongest and there's this awesome moments towards the end where these remnants of Hoth's um, army of lights from the first book they hunt down bane on a rumor that he's where he is and that a rumor that there's a final there's a last sith and it's like five on two uh like five jedi versus two um bane and, and xana and bane and xana just whoop ass like they just they take these jedi to task and there's an epic moment at the end. Um, I know I already said this before, but I forget the name. Sorry, I still don't remember his name, but that healer. Um, they used the healer to remove the parasites from Bane. And Bane's in this terrible condition, like he's weak. And Xana drives her cousin, uh, who she calls Tomcat drives him to insanity and cuts up this healer in the little pieces and decorates his corpse and uh, basically summons the Jedi to their location and the Jedi show up and kill her friend or cousin Tomcat and they believe that they've killed the final Sith who and they even she even sets like the lightsaber hilts on the ground so they believe that her cousin Tomcat um had killed all the Jedi and, and was the Sith they were looking for. So they once again believe the Sith are, are wiped out. So, you know, it is really dark and interesting plot because you would assume the Jedi would know better than this, but then it all kind of goes back to it. Like the Jedi are, are arrogant and it's one of the drawbacks of them and it always has been. They're just so willing to accept that the Sith are, are dead when I'm sure they had somewhat of a thought that hey maybe they're not but they didn't care you know and then the third and final book sets up the uh, the healer's daughter as this princess and also sets up this guy named set who's a um, ex-sith from the brotherhood of or ex-jedi i should say sorry ex-jedi who was trained by um, this Ithorian, but he basically goes around now like uh, he's like he's like a Han Solo of darkness, I guess the best way to put it. He's this uh, suave, only out for himself Jedi slash Sith, kind of kind of gray, but definitely more on the dark side. But this one's really all about. Xana and Bane, you know, their final confrontation. Bane looks out for this holocron that would might make him immortal because he believes that Xana won't try to overthrow him. 
you know, won't try to kill him and take on the mantle of Sith Lord. So he tries to find this holocron from Darth and Dedu that will show him how to become immortal by transferring his essence into another body until he finds a suitable heir to the Sith. So, you know, and in Xana, it's also about her kind of searching for her own apprentice and, and taking up this final, you know, mission of, of killing Bane and, and taking the mantle of Sith Lord on, on her own. And in this respect, it's very epic. But it's also still very, very dark. Um, the princess, the, the son of that healer that was cut up into pieces, or the daughter, I'm sorry. Um, she has this mission to find Bane and kill him. And actually has him, succeeds in getting him like restrained and helpless. And in her rage and enjoyment and basically, you know, torturing Bane basks in her victory too long and loses her chance. Funny enough, her her best friend and bodyguard is actually an ex-sniper from the Gloomwalkers and uh, fought alongside Bane back when he was Dez. And she actually freed Bane on this feeling of, you know, she owed him for the amount of times that he's saved her life and she actually gets just wiped out in this confrontation with Bane and Xana so it's 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 just so dark you know there's there's so much darkness to this stuff but again just fantastic they have an epic final showdown and Xana eventually you know is the first successful killing of the master from the apprentice and takes on her own apprentice the huntress this uh i don't remember what the what the race is called ictor ictoroth or icta i forget what it's called darth cognis the huntress you can google her and, and it would tell you the uh the race that race is actually one of the jedi masters in the um prequels I don't remember which jedi master i think one of the jedi masters actually gets owned from Palpatine I might be I might be mistaken there but definitely one of the masters I remember seeing that race but overall just so much in there and I passed over just so much of, of the actual trilogy um, just fantastic stuff original story if you're if you're a Star Wars fan um, that craves EU stuff that's you know not so kitty um, it has a lot of callbacks to KOTOR. Like this is prime reading for you. This is this is perfect. Uh, if you like audiobooks and you're looking for a Star Wars book, um, you know I, I struggle to to decide what's better between Heir to the Empire and uh, and Path of Destruction. Path of Destruction is is a phenomenal book, guys. A plus, seriously. So read the first Bane book. And uh, you'll be hooked in to read the other two as well. And guys, just a heads up on my show. We are just about done with animation. At which point uh, it'll be sound design and uh, score. We're hoping to have it done mid-November or potentially uh, mid-December. Just depending on, on how this final bit of uh, animation goes. So definitely keep an eye out. And uh, I'll look to cut up a trailer here pretty soon. So with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to have my schedule fixed up here. So expect more videos, expect more streams from myself. And uh, may the force be with you guys. Thank you very much to McDurgan and Wendy LeBlanc for being patrons of mine. Patrons, I guess, is a better proper term. Thank you for being patrons of mine. And until next time, guys, may the force be with you.